good idea. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Two Nerds, One Quest. I am your host and DM JC Dittmer here with these three nerds because you know math is hard. That man bopping his head back and forth is one Tom M. Norman. I, I live. Oh, excuse me. I li- I'm Not, live. It, it, his character's name isn't Burp. Um, <laughs> I swear. He is playing Doug. Kind of sounds like a burp. Doug. Myron. Myron. Call me Myron. 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 Myron Why do I Doug. Call, no one calls you Myron. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just looking Doug at it now. And I realized <laughs> I made my nameplate wrong. I have Doug Myron Bloodbeak, and it should be Myron Doug Bloodbeak. Yeah. Yes, it should be. <laughs> so you got to do nameplates again. <laughs> uh, wait till the end of the show. You might not make it. Yeah, right. That man counting on his fingers earlier in the blue is one Ryan Crixus Kupta. Yeah, yeah. That, nah, I'm not talking about myself here, although I am in blue. How are you doing this morning, bud? I think you're muted. Did you mute yourself? Am I muted? You, you were. were. You aren't now. Oh. Oh. Well, then I can't bless you with my script, Tafe. Hey. <laughs> Let's have a fantastic Sunday, guys. You have a script? Oh my god. I swear, people, this is D&D. This show is not scripted. <laughs> it is lined. The only thing scripted is the limerick, because there's no way I can come up with that on the fly. If Bullshit. you could, you'd be even more amazing than you already are. That one is Jeff <laughs> Jacob Williams. <laughs> How you doing? Good morning, everyone. From a thankfully dry, lazy dragon. After all the rain we got yesterday. Oh, man, was that a great thunderstorm last night? Oh, so good. So much rain. Just laying there we with actually the sh- thunder. We actually should make Jeff just freestyle one one time. I bet you would surprise <laughs> the hell out of yourself. Oh, I'm sure you would. Oh, man. I quit. <laughs> I, I, I quit. I'm done. <laughs> I'll set the beat. <laughs> Jeff, you got to just time that I quit with your summer break. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Freak everyone out. What? Jeff's no longer on the show. Yeah. Like last year even on break, I think I wrote uh a handful of limericks for you guys to read. So Oh for sure. Yeah. Yes you did. Staying in touch. All right. Recap time? Yeah. Speaking of limericks, you got a recap and a limerick for us? Yeah, so uh we woke up in the morning in, in uh Valine's hut. Had some conversations while the DM was was uh, busy. Talked about motivations. Talked about strategy. Um, walked back through the room that we had defeated all the shades in. Found twelve skeletons in the next room. Coincidentally, twelve was the number of shades. Uh, one of them had a holy symbol, so we took the holy symbol. And uh, now Doug and Jacob are each wearing a holy symbol to Mistral. Uh, there was a room full of icicles next, um, and the following room was full of ice kobolds. Uh, Tika was having fun smashing things until she was told to be quiet. Um, she uh, jumped into the next room, bringing five kobold vampires from the ceiling. Uh, Crixus, using his clerical abilities, turned three of them away, so we only had two to fight at once. Um, but the way the others were taking off uh jacob went to chase after one um ended up uh we killed three of them the other two kept running uh the ones that were killed had stakes to the heart and crumbled to dust the two that are missing one uh if you're following the uh the maps one went to the north east into h18 one ran back through the rooms we went uh and the last was last seen going into h11 uh, Jacob, Tika, and I think Valine are in um, H17. H14. Oh, 14, and, yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, Doug and Crixus are in H17. And I think, depending on how long it took to stake them, sometime within the next 30 seconds, I believe the uh, turn undead will end and they may or may not return or keep running. We don't know. So, those vampire kobolds were no fun, until Crixus made some of them run. Three no longer hissing, two are still missing, but hey, Doug dealt damage of one. (laughs) Congratulations, Doug. (laughs) 
I, I was rewatching a little bit of it, <laughs> the tail end to remember where we left off, and, the, and your comment, hey, remember when you did one point of damage? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did good. missing like good. three times in a row. I'm good at fighting. And Doug yeah, is. But yeah, Doug is definitely. In, in his defense, he did protect Crixus from potential further uh, crit damage, so there's that. That is true. Mm -hmm. Aranon was a better fighter, though. He just didn't yeah. do very good at going through windows. Aranon was a reckless fighter. He was a barbarian? <laughs> <laughs> no, not so much. That would have been an interesting multi-class. Barbarian rogue? Uh, monk rogue? Barbarian. <laughs> monk barbarian rogue. Barbarian rogue works if you uh, if you start out right and assume finesse weapons, but still use strength. Yeah, I could have used strength many times. And if you can <laughs> reckless, you always have advantage, and you always get sneak attack. Yep. So you guys have staked the hearts of three of these guys, and they have turned to ash and dust. They deserve it. Out. Yep. Oh, absolutely. I didn't say they didn't. Uh, leaving behind ash and dust laying on the snow and ice around you. The stakes laying there amongst the ash and dust. What would you like to do? It's remarkably quiet right now. There's no yipping or barking. You hear the occasional tinkle of a chunk of ice fall or echo throughout the cage. Cave. <laughs> Jacob would like to pick up the bow that he dropped to pull out his rapier, and then uh, he would ask if anyone needs a, a cure wounds. Crixus would, at, as he bends over to pick up all the, um, all the wooden stakes, he would say, "I could use a bit, lad." All right. That's a great question. There it goes. Uh, you can have five. Would you like more? Please, sir. Ah, uh, that's good. I'd like some more. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the main problem is I took a lot of necrotic damage there. So uh, you hear Krixa say, "Ah, I just I I can't shake the pain." Yeah, your max is down like 20. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't <laughs> ideal. Um, if no one else needs healing, then he's going to go and try to find some of his arrows. Do you need more healing, Crixus? What's your... How, how I mean, you no. I need to I need to go to... I need to take a nap. Need, Crixus needs um, to go to sleep at some point, but yeah, um, we'll continue to press on. If it's like last time with the arrows. I shot six arrows. I'll roll a d6, and that's how many okay. I find. Is that how yeah. you want to do it? Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Oh, nice. A fiver. A fiver. Nice. You recover five of your arrows. Once you're sitting there, you feel, all of you, feel a familiar... Um, Hunger set in again. It seems a little strange. You just ate about a half hour ago, something. You're hungry again. You just have those days where you're hungry. And you just want to eat. It's, you feel like that. Huh. Uh, I'll, I'll share a, I'll... a ration. Yeah, I'll share a ration with uh, Tika. Okay. Texas will also have one. If you guys, uh, um, like, if you want to split one. Yeah, I, I would just very sure. to satiate the hunger. I was going to say, okay. Duggan, like, I know you're splitting one with Tika. But if uh, Crixus and Doug wanted to split one, they could. That would be enough to sati satiate the hunger. Seems Sounds good. Mmm, satiate. <laughs> I 
All right, so, so make sure you mark off your ration as you eat it. Do you want me to mark it off, Cooch? Yes, I do. Which direction are you headed? All right, so we're all so, back together again in 17. Is that... Lean walked back down to 17 to join Doug. Yeah. Crixus. Um, I... Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'll ask you if uh, anybody heard a noise from 18 when that thing went running that way. Because I think we heard something other than yips when it ran. I don't recall. I, I don't really... I didn't hear anything. Can I ask the professor? He said there was some sort of sound. He didn't recognize what it would be. But something did come from that direction when... When he went... But then, like, it got real quiet then. Again, suddenly, too. Well, let's go check it out. I'm gonna start heading in that direction. Okay, you start heading in that direction, uh, down the hall. Yeah, I assume Doug is leading. <laughs> Doug's yep. leading now. Doug's leading? All right, Doug, you lead. You come into that main section of H18, and there are six mounds of snow. And you're walking carefully, and you take a step, and there's a point where you take a step, and they all shift and stand up. That they seems have accurate. arms and legs. And they just kind of watch you for a second. What do you do? You can see the footprints of the kobold that went running through. All right, let's bring that beat back. I am going they, to... They, they actually run. They run probably about 10 feet along that south wall and then disappear. And... Are, are they like guards? Do they have like shields and swords and stuff? Or are nope, they just... They're just snow. Snowmen, essentially. All right. Mm. I'm going to put my hands up and say, we're just wanting to pass. Uh, what are they? Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> I got to check what their intelligence says. <laughs> I don't know if they'll understand you. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it kind of cocks its head to the side and like a dog um, doesn't seem to understand what you're saying do you want me to do you want to send Tika in there see I what know. happens no I'm going to uh, just kind of slowly walk past them and follow the tracks along the south as you take another step in they take a step towards you all six of them I will take a step back. They all take a step back. I'll take a step forward. They step forward towards you. Then do you do the hokey pokey and I was turn gonna yourself around? I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> hokey pokey with the snowman. <laughs> um, if you... Um, make an insight check at this point. Eight. Yeah, you think they just they're reacting to your movements. You don't understand it. They're just moving in time with you for some reason. Uh so I'm going to Are they blocking my path or are they just there? Um they're kinda of littered in front of you. As you move, if you moved like 10 feet into the room, you think they'd be blocking your path. Like if they pursued, like when you move, they move just like that. Um, and you don't think you'd get more than 10 feet into the room until they would be near you. To I'm either going to grab take... you or whatever. I'm going to take a step to the oh. right. They move. I think a step you to should the right. charge up the master sword and just walk up. He doesn't and have then you'll hit all of them at the same time. <laughs> oh, charge him that way. <laughs> charge it that way. Um, so if I move to my right, they move to their right, or they're moving to my right? 
They're moving to your right. They're following you. They're marking you. Each step you take, they take a step in that direction. Okay. So they I was gonna say, if, if I take a step to the right and they move to their right, well, that's easy. And then I just move. Oh yeah. Then, then you just walk around the cave. You literally do the <laughs> hokey pokey. Yeah. I'm going to turn around and address the group and say, well, do we try to get past them or do we go a different route? Too bad we don't have your uh, magical eyeball there, Trixus. Yeah, it's been a long rest since that happened. So, Yeah. Um, I mean, we could let loose that obsidian steed in this room and see if it could tear apart some snowmen. I... Yeah, I mean, that's an option. Maybe maybe we do send... Let's, let's send Teek in. Why don't, you, why don't you send her in? All right, where do you want her to go? Just go towards the snowmen and see what happens. What is... What element is Tika set to right now? She's set, set to, to fire. Okay. Uh, what do you do? All right. Um, so uh, if Doug points out where the footprints are, I would have Tika basically follow those footprints. And if something comes at her, then she'll defend herself. What is Tika exactly? She's your familiar? Or She's no? a... Drake Warden pet? She, she's a summoned... Yeah... So what is what is her stat block that you're using? Is uh, uh if you search Drake Warden, you can see okay. um, I just want to look at some stuff here. It has basically a stat block, but there's a bunch of asterisks based on my level and um, proficiency bonus. If you forget to type Warden, you'll just see a lot of information on the singer Drake, and you could get <laughs> lost. So. Nobody wants that. Drake watch. Oh, why is this not coming up? Is there something in particular? I copied a lot of the information over. No, I was just wanting to see, does she have any sort of aura or anything? Or is she, like, you said she's set to fire. So is she on she's, fire? Or is she she's, she's immune... She's immune to fire, and part of her bite now deals fire damage, as okay. does her. She has a reaction essence that she can pump someone else's attack, okay. but there's no, like, like she's not on fire or anything. Okay. Or get, she doesn't give off heat. That's good. That's what I was looking for. Does she give off heat of any kind? All right. So she steps in, and as she steps in further, they go from focusing their steps on uh, Doug's movement to focusing their steps on her movement. And as she approaches them, they all approach her how far does she go um <clears throat> the closer she, was... she gets the more menacing they get the um, form and then mm. growl will start happening and hands are in there and like you well, get the feeling that if she steps up straight to them in melee range they're gonna swing at her all right um you notice this about 10 feet before she's in contact with them so i say i'm waiting to see if Doug says anything or if we're still experimenting here and if he doesn't say anything then I'll just give her the attack command yeah I, I would and go say, for the nearest one I would say uh, as they become menacing I would say well flame on <laughs> alright I'll give her the attack command and have her pounce at the nearest one okay she can pounce at the nearest one and then we're going to roll initiative Do, 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 do. All right. She is a pouncing and attacking. 22 to hit. Oh, yeah. 22 hits. And then uh, the second D6 is fire, if it matters. So it does. Uh, so it's five uh, piercing damage and four fire damage. All right, then roll, go ahead and roll initiative. Um, Ugh, nine. All right. 
21. Big 10, yo. Oh, I gotta pop in and roll. roll. The wings here. Oh, that's fun. It uses my funny, fun dice. All right. And let's start this off. Uh, that is a, let's see. We'll run down the initiative here. It is Jacob. Um, them. You'll find out. <laughs> uh, so here, let me just do this. Ha <laughs> Jacob, the Golems, Belling, Crixus, and Doug in that order. So Jacob, it is your go. Um, let's see. All right. There's any no. All right, uh longbow at the one in front of Tika, I guess. Okay. Uh, two shots. Eleven? That hits. These things oh are my not goodness. hard to hit. Not hard to hit at all. Uh, I will have Tika use her reaction to add a d6 of fire to this. So, seven longbow magical piercing damage and three fire. Three fire? Okay. And that fire damage, both the fire damage from before and this fire damage now, seems to do more than it, you thought it would. Okay. Uh, second attack is also an 11. And that also hits. And uh, for eight piercing damage. Yeah, this guy's not looking so hot. And I'll use my bonus action to command Tika to attack. Okay. And that is enough to hit. 18 to hit. Yep. With uh, nine piercing and one fire. All right, you want to describe the kill shot as she tears through the snowman? Yeah, I, I'm picturing that as she bites into it, it's like melting in her mouth like cotton candy. Like M&M's, melts in your mouth, not in your hands. <laughs> All right, does that conclude your turn then? Uh, yep, that's everything. All right, the first one, uh, seeing his brethren torn apart, is going to attack Tika. Um, so this is, let's see... Going to slam for seven. The first attack. Uh, that's a miss. Uh, slam on the second one is a nat one, so that'll miss. And slam on the third one is a six. So that one completely miss. missed her. Uh, that was one creature. That was one creature. Uh, Oof. Snow Golem C uh, moves up to Tika and is going to... Try the same thing. Let's see here. First slam is Deal a nine. Later, Tika. Second slam is a sixteen. Oh, our AC is seventeen. Oh goodness, they are not doing well. Third slam. There we go. Twenty-two. <laughs> That'll hit. All right, it does eight points of bludgeoning damage plus ooh, 12 points of cold damage. Whoa. We may not want to stay in this fight. I will tell you right now, that was max damage rolls on both those, the uh, bludgeoning and the cold. Okay. That is the most damage they will do in an attack. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tika's not looking so hot. Uh, number... Pun intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No kidding, right? Uh, this, this guy is going to... He's not been focused on Tika. He's the one in the back. He's kind of been looking at Doug. He's going to throw a snowball at Doug. That's a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, Doug. Um, awesome. Oh, my, my dice are lagging here. Um, damage. That's a, oh, it didn't do the crit. I should have rolled. I gotta remember to right click to roll the crit damage. Uh, that is 
10 points of cold damage. It's actually a relatively low crit considering it's 2d6 plus 2. Uh, and the last one... Oh no, this isn't the last one. There are six of these. Um, another one from the back is going to throw at Doug again. Because he's the only other one in the room other, other than Tika. That's an 18 to hit. Yep. Yep. And that is nine points of cold damage. Uh, this... Sixth one is going after Tika with slam attacks again. Uh, 17 just hits. That hits. Yeah, she's down, I'm pretty sure. That's eight points of bludgeoning damage. Yeah, she's gone. 10 of cold damage. Okay, so Tika dis. Well, how does she just she disappear? She's like a fae style creature, so she just kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's magically summoned, so she's magically gone. Yeah, right. just poof. So Tika goes poof. That's uh, Valine's turn. Uh, Valine sees what's going on here, and she is going to. Oh, let's see where are her spells. She wants to. What does she want to do? Does she have a. I'm, I'm trying to see if she has like an AOE. That would actually be really good right now. And she really doesn't. She's only got her ray. Um, yeah, she's going to do a ray of sickness at one of them. At. <laughs> uh, <fourth laughs> level. Um, ah, what happened here? Where are you not? Let me close it. I don't. <laughs> are you okay there, John? Is messing with my head. Messing with my head. It isn't allowing me to close the thing the way I wanted it to. Oh, that's a nat 20. That is a nat 20. Nice. Right. <laughs> On a level 4 ray of sickness, this will be kind of huge. Who is this against? Uh, a, 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 one of Valine the... Valina's uh, attacking. Valina's Valine, nice. attacking one of them. Um... Oh shit, that's a lot of dice. Oh <laughs> she, shit. She just straight up annihilates one. She's not playing around. It's just poof. She saw what snow. she saw Tika disappear and she's like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so yeah. This this ray of sickness hits this thing and just <laughs> it snow just poof <laughs> up the backside of it. Um that's gonna be her turn. She's gonna, she's gonna just. She positioned herself to get in, to move that, and she's done that. And we're gonna move to Crixus. That's a damn good turn. Oh yeah. <laughs> Crixus saw that, and he was kind of inspired by that. So he's gonna shoot a guiding bolt at one to see if he can like match Valine's intensity. Nice. Twenty-one to hit. Oh, absolutely. And this is radiant damage, but it's only 11. Radiant damage of 11. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, this isn't where I read radiant damage earlier. It, uh, it, yeah, the 11 damage seems to uh, hit it pretty hard. And then I'm staying back, though. I am not engaging in this combat. It, you said this was Guiding Bolt? Correct, sir. All so right, now so it's sparkly whatever. like a Twilight Vampire. Yep. <laughs> it's one of the ones that was nearest to Tika. Doug. It's you, sir. So. It's you, 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 you. With the sparkly, what happens with the sparkly? Or is it just. Uh, you gain advantage on your next attack on him. Okay. Uh, are there any other of the, the snowmen that Tika hit hand. that have damage? No, everything that's been damaged is dead. <laughs> Okay. Except for the sparkly one. Except for the sparkly one. Oh, yes, that's right. Shit. Well, I don't want to use up the advantage roll on that by doing a spell. Well, if it's a spell <clears throat> with an attack roll. 
That's you not... get advantage on that attack roll. Oh, it would be okay. a wisdom then it doesn't, roll. And it doesn't waste it. It stays it until the next it. attack. Yeah. So you can do oh. whatever you want. Just right, don't. Well. Only if you if you kill it, it, then we can't use the advantage. Other than that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm gonna do toll the dead, wisdom saving fourteen. On um, the one that's sparkly, or the one next to it that was attacking Tika. On um, the one that's sparkly, because if it's if it's got damage already, I go from doing two d eight to do two d twelve. Oh, okay. So toll the dead. Mm -hmm. uh, what what save? You said wisdom. Fourteen. Yep, wisdom. Uh, that's a that's a. Oh yeah, that's a three. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's got a minus two. <laughs> and I rolled low, so let's go ahead and roll that damage. Twenty. Oh, oh <laughs> This thing does not look well. I rolled. An I would 11 say it's bloody. It, it's melty. <laughs> it's not bloodied. It's melted. <laughs> it's, it looks Garrett like knows is sliding down his belly. <laughs> <laughs> the coal eye is falling out. <laughs> just running down its face. Like a horror movie. Just melt face. <laughs> Don't let it find its hat. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> are you done, Doug? I don't know. Are you done? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, suddenly, like, there's there's an enrage mechanic on this fight where they all go back and grab their top hats. <laughs> the whole fight starts over. <laughs> Jake, oh, it's your turn. <laughs> I broke myself. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He really did. All right. <laughs> oh my god, that's such a funny. I'm gonna, idea. I'm gonna take advantage <laughs> of that uh, guiding bolt and. Uh... Okay. <laughs> that looks good. Uh, Twenty-four to hit. Oh my god, you guys! All these massive twenty-plus hits. You don't need them on these guys. <laughs> Six damage, piercing. Yep. He is hanging on by an icicle. Still there? Oh, man. All right. Shoot him again. 20 to hit. Dirty yep, 20. That, that hits. How, what, describe the kill shot, because your minimum damage will kill him <laughs> at this point. Uh, I rolled a 1, so 3 damage. He's uh, dead. Describe your kill shot. <laughs> yeah, so far. So the, so the, the second arrow maybe was let loose before the first one even hit. Just foo foo. And uh, split it kind of like right at the neck and a little explosion. of uh, so it's, it's raining down snow a little bit. Yeah, some of that melty uh, ice, that water had frozen into ice on the snow. And the back-to-back -back arrows just shatter that ice through the back of his neck. And the whole snow just kind of poof, hits and spreads out like powder. Um, well, let's see. Bonus action without the Drake around. Um, yeah, what do you do? What do I you don't. Watch? I don't have anything actually. Pop quiz, hot shot. What do you do? <laughs> it's a dance off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, okay, Star I Lord. <laughs> wow, we no, are all over the, the map this morning. <laughs> yeah. Frosty the Snowman, Speed, Star, Mar um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Gosh. I love it. That's it for me. We got three of them down, so All right. I'll yep. call it a successful turn. Undo that. Uh, this guy is going to move towards Doug because Doug is the closest. Uh, they're still hostile. They're still hostile. Oh yeah, they're they're very hostile. Uh, they're not very intelligent. They're very hostile. <laughs> they were built for a purpose. <laughs> would you say their demeanor is frosty? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I would. And if you don't have inspiration, go ahead and take it. Because I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yay. First attack is a nine. Second attack is a nat one. Oh my god, are you guys getting lucky? Third attack is a 14. I have a feeling that misses you as well. Uh, it does. Uh, another guy's going to move up. Next guy's going to move up into range with you. Because I'm getting frustrated with how I'm rolling. <laughs> and he's going to attack you. That's a six. Nope. That's a ten. Nuh uh. Good flipping god. Fifteen? Negatory. Alright. 
We'll, we'll try this one more time. There's a third one here that can move into range with you. <laughs> uh, nada and... 17. Oh, yep. 17. Yes, there we go, finally. Uh, that is four points of bludgeoning damage. Plus six points of cold damage. Second hit is... Um, oh, that's a nat twenty. Fuck! You get pretty little flowers on my dice when that happens. It's like it's like uh, you either get ones or twenties. <laughs> yeah, there's no in between. There's no in between. Um, and why didn't that roll out as crit? I marked it as crit. Uh, that'll be twelve bludgeoning damage. Mm. And oops. Fuck! I clicked the right shit here. Oh, there we go. I got to click that roll button on the bottom. That's why. And 12 cold damage. Oh, shit. I that don't the... look so good. That was the <laughs> second hit, right? Yeah. Hey, guys. I don't feel so good. And that <laughs> last one was a six. Yeah, you aren't kidding. It's either ones and twos or it's 20s. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at today. Um, but hey, we got three of them down in two rounds, so... Yeah, Valene sees the three of them uh, around um, Doug there and is a little concerned. Um, she's got that same ray that she can hit him with, so she's going to do that again. Um, that's a 10, which does hit. Um, <laughs> wow. Interesting. For 15 damage. Big and slow. So... Uh, 15 damage to that guy. Um, does she have a bonus action of anything she can do? Uh, let's see. Actions. Bonus action. Nope, she doesn't. Uh, so she's going to stay where she's at. She's just lobbing in rays of sickness at these guys. Um, let's move us to then Crixus. You're hanging back, too. Uh, you saw another couple of them disintegrated, and they seem to be surrounding Doug at this point. Yeah, I'm also going to do just the exact same thing, is find one that hasn't been hit yet, and I'm going to lob a guiding bolt at him. Okay. Ooh, can I use my inspiration to re-roll that if it's a spell attack? We, we just you? learned that 10 is a hit. Yeah, you just learned. Oh, the league had right. a ten and it hit before, so that does hit. They are all big right, and Never small. mind. I take it. I take it all back. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to use that. <laughs> all right. Not better. Eleven this time. Eleven. All right. That one is all sparkly. That's the middle one. There's one further furthest away from you that hasn't been hit yet. The one closest to you was the Moline just hit. And then the one in between the two of them is the one that Crixus just hit. That's all sparkly. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Crixus? Just position myself behind Jacob. Okay. <laughs> Human shield. You both <laughs> the position behind Jacob. Doug. All right. So the one you are that's at sparkly 14 health. only has You are 11. surrounded. Yep only has 11 damage right yeah or one has is taken 11 damage and one is taken 15 yeah, um, yeah now might be a fun time to use one of those bonus uh things you were attempting to use in the last uh like a. they are made of snow if that helps you at all just say or you just get two attacks right and yeah Go to town. So just whack away. All right. So I'm. And you get advantage to... on the first one if you attack that one. Yep. I'm going to uh, attack the one that has eleven. Okay. The shiny one. So the sparkly. I'm the gonna. Shiny. I'm gonna attack the twilight snowman. The twilight snowman. Okay. With advantage. Twilight snowman. 19 That's to hit. Show title. 19 absolutely hits. All right. 
So I'm you going can to divide that in half and still hit. Uh, one. Oh, nice max damage there. Plus, I'm going to um, do divine smite. So that's nine damage, and then I'm going to do when you hit with a melee attack, you can expend one spell slot to deal two d8 extra radiant damage to the target, okay. plus one d8 for each spell level higher than the first. So I'm going to do it as a level two and do three d8. Right. Actually, no, I'm going to uh, do a level. I'm going to do a level one. Just do two d8 radiant. Okay. And I'm just going to hit you with a little semantic thing. Mm -hmm. um, once you hit, you roll your two hit, mm -hmm. then you go ahead and smite there. So then you roll all your damage at once. It's a semantic um, the, thing. It, the way the you did divine, it. Divine, divine smite is, is the opposite of that. That's the one where once you hit, you can choose to do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He rolled his two hit dice and knew he hit. At that point, he announces it and then he rolls all his damage at once. Right. You, I'm just, you can't use divine like, it's, smite until you. You can't use Divine Smite until you hit. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a Let's Paladin see, ability, not a spell. Yeah, it, starting at second level, when you hit a creature with a melee yeah, weapon the, attack... Yeah, the second... I hear what you you're saying. You hit, and it is, it's announced that you hit. That's when yeah. you can oh, start Oh, you mean before he did the... Before, before he rolled he his damage. damage. Yeah, oh, that's okay. what I'm saying. Before he okay, rolled his gotcha. damage. Gotcha. It, like... And I started this whole thing saying it's a semantic thing because it's yeah. it, it's semantics. It doesn't really matter. It just well, speeds up the game if you roll the only your reason it's... once instead of rolling damage. Right. And then because if it would if the if it because I didn't tell I didn't tell him the thing. Yeah. He has no he has no idea how much damage the eight damage right. is going to be. I didn't announce that it was alive or dead or what it looked like yeah. yet. So that's there. There is the the semantic yep. thing there that I think Ryan was just gonna say. Yep. Is if I, gotcha. I say, oh yeah, he died there. Mm -hmm. I smell what you're stepping in. Yeah, right. That's yeah. that's the deal. It, it, you'd say I put divine smite on my weapon, basically, and if you already killed it, you'd say, oh, I didn't do that. So, yeah. So I did nine bludgeoning damage and fourteen yep. radiant damage. Fourteen radiant, so a total of twenty-three. 23. Yep. He does not look good. Not at all. That 40 must have the just ding -ding. barely killed it. Mm hmm Yeah. Second attack? You you second attack there? Yep. Second I'm attack there? Second attack. Yeah. 10. Yep, that That's is. That's enough. <laughs> Not going to get that oh, very often. Nine. No. Describe your kill shot, sir. Uh, the mace on my second because I hit it the first time and I basically I'm just going poof, 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 poof. Whack, whack. <laughs> <laughs> like Bugs Bunny with the glove and then on my as a bonus action I'm going to uh, cast uh Shield of Faith, which gives me uh, concentration up to 10 minutes, and it gives me plus two bonus to my AC. That's a good idea. Uh-huh. Cool. That's a really good idea. <laughs> um, does that complete your turn, then? Yeah. Unless, unless I can move try... backwards. But I am you guessing can move away. You're going to take AOs from yeah. two of them. No. But AOs are a single attack. Genius. This music reminds me of the seventh guest, like when we're solving a puzzle. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Seventh guest. Seventh guest and eleventh hour. If I can get if I could get a mod on that, I would love to play that now. I am actually going I'm into to the soup. I'm actually gonna move so I'm out of <sighs> No, I'm gonna take my chances. You're gonna, gonna take your chances to stay there? I'm going to take my chances to hide be behind meat, me. Be meat shield. Okay. Sounds good. Um, just remember, you have a plus two to your AC, so you're at 19 yep. for this for 10 minutes, as long as you maintain concentration. Yep. Cool. All right, Jacob. We are back. All right. There are two left standing. Seeing there's there's a two... snowbank forming around uh, Doug. <laughs> uh, seeing as there's two left, and 
Uh, it doesn't look like I'll probably be likely to take one out. I'm going to summon Tika with my once a day summon uh, right in the spot where uh, the one was just destroyed. Okay. And I will summon her again as, as fire because that seemed to do well. And okay. so that'll be my action. And then bonus action, I'll, so I'll just yell, bite the snowman. And uh, <laughs> Tika will bite, bite, bite the, the snowman. So uh, she'll just, I mean, considering she just appeared, uh, I guess it would be random which one she attacks. So uh, She's in between I, the two of them. If she, if she dropped in the one that he just killed, she's yeah. in between the two of them. So it could be either one. Do you want the one that was right. damaged or so, the one that wasn't? Because uh, I would say you can summon her in a direction, facing a direction. Okay, yeah, then I would face, which... I'll face the one that was hit. Okay. Just on the off chance that if she crits and does some fire damage. So let's see if she can do it. It's not a crit, but it's a dirty 20. Oh, nice. That does hit. Decent dice. So that is seven piercing and three fire. All right. So a total of 13. All right, yeah, he's not looking so hot. Not All right. looking so hot. And... Look menacing, Tika. That's the end of my turn. Growl a lot. Growl. <laughs> All right. So this guy uh, sees Tika uh, appear in front of him and is and bite him. So he's he's a little pissed. So he's gonna swing at her. Uh, first swing is a oh wow. There's the middle of the road. Fifteen. Uh, nope. Seventeen. All right. Uh, there's a 17. Okay. It is 8 bludgeoning and... Oh, come on. No, she's resistant to cold, right? No, nope, she's, resi- no, she's she's immune to fire. Oh, immune to... F- okay. She's immune to fire. Uh, it's I thought 3 about... cold damage. 3 cold. I thought about bringing the cold I one I thought about bringing her back as, as cold because then she'd be immune, but... Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, that was the second hit. Third, third swing is. Ooh, that spun a lot. Eighteen to hit. Yep, that hits. So that's uh six bludgeoning and seven cold, and okay. that completes its turn. Oops. I gotta get through the order. Uh, that one just did Tika. This one's going after Doug. Because um, Doug is right there. Good luck, Doug. First swing is a 10. Negatory. Second swing is an 8. Nope. Third swing is a 14. Nine. <laughs> Nada. <laughs> Valine feels like we got this a bit more. In- and she's going to go to her trusty... Um, her trusty whatchamajigger wand of magic missile yeah why do I not have I didn't put her wand in here apparently um, <laughs> it's fine I'll just roll it uh, I'll let the one guy that's been hurt already So, uh, thir- 13? Yes. Uh, 13 at that one. And as the um, magic missiles go sailing out of her wand, they pelt this thing. Poof, 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 and you get a face full of snow miring <laughs> as it explodes in front of you. Take that, icicle breath. Um... So that was Valine Crixus. We are back to you. Things are looking a bit more manageable as there's only one snowman left. All right, Crixus is going to approach it. No reason to use spells. You walk up to him. Yep, you get up on his backside. <laughs> Just take uh, the backside of my hand axe and try to knock his block off. All right, go for it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> right, you know they have been. They have an, you know they have an AC of ten, right? Like you it, can't miss them. That that's 
that was a nat one, right? It was, in fact. It, yep. It was, in fact, a nat one. Um, so when you swing at him, uh, you're, you're, you're like, oh, uh, we got this. Now there's one left. And you go to backhand. I need a dexterity saving throw from you as your axe yeah. slips from your hand. Because you haven't been using it. It's kind of cold. And when you grabbed it, it's slick. 12. It goes sailing out of your hand off into the corner of the room. You nice. do not have your hand axe at this point. Nice. Perfect. I look at my hand. And then uh, just grab onto my shield and kind of bring it up and like pissed off. Okay. <laughs> uh, we move to Doug. You have one standing in front of you. You just saw Crixus essentially throw his hand axe away. And you're kind of wondering why. Yeah, I'm actually going to say, what the shit was that? Sure. Uh, hit him with the mace. Face Actually, I'm gonna, s- I'm gonna s- face place. <laughs> they don't really have a face; they have a surface. <laughs> Does is he damaged at all? Uh, no, no, he looks hale and hearty. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. He's a full-grown snowman. Hmm. What are you doing? I'm going to do Toll the Dead. Okay. Wisdom saving 14. Wisdom saving throw of 14. Yeah, he's up in your face. He's up in your grill. Get him. That's a 7. Well, you get two attacks, by the way. Only get one Toll the Dead. Yeah. Nine damage. Nine points of damages. Yeah, I know. To complete your turn, Doug, or do you have a bonus action? Uh, I think I'm good. I'm good. You think you're good? Okay. Um, Jacob. Jacob is gonna yell, duck, and try to thread the needle with a couple of arrows. Eighteen to hit. Uh, yeah, 18 hits. Valine uses her reaction to duck. <laughs> you uh, bring your bow up over the top of her. <laughs> uh, six points of um, piercing damage, and I will have Tika's reaction to add a d6, so four fire. So six piercing, four fire. Yeah, and then second attack. Second attack. Is a natural 20. Should have saved the dice for that one, but. See, does it roll the crit automatically? No, you got to right click on it. And... Yeah. Oh. Actually, it, it, lit, it lit it up. So cool. Oh, did it? Uh, right. So that's uh, 13 piercing damage. He does not look good. At and all. bonus action Tika attack. I is nuts. And <laughs> come on, Tika, you're hungry. For Get him in the snow. carrot. Get him in the carrot. Twenty-one to hit. Yeah, absolutely hits him. Should hit. Come on, second dice be big. Oh yeah. So, so nine piercing and five fire. All right. So uh, give me an idea what the kill shot is here, and then I'm gonna narrow this last like six seconds for us. All right, just Tika, Tika with a big old tackle, like a, like a nothing tackle. Like a melting tackle? Okay. Yeah. So it's a moment where, uh, where Crixus runs up to this thing. Actually, wait. Let's back up a second here. So we had, uh, no, we're going to start. Valine launches three magic missiles at the one. Poof, 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 and kind of melts into a pile of snow. Crixus can run in up. Uh, grabs his axe as he's doing it. Swings, misses, throws it into the back corner. Doug channels some magic. Just hits that this bell comes out and rings over the head of this one. As Valine's still in her pose from her magic missile, you hear uh, Jacob say, Doc, and he swings his bow around and fires two arrows that quick at the other one. And then Tika goes running and pounces on it and just kind of tears it up in snow, kind of flies everywhere. And Tika's kind of looking around for the next one. It's really 
quiet. Just a very exciting <laughs> set of attacks. <laughs> it was fun to huh. think about my head. Awesome. I want to narrate that, so we're out of initiative now. Awesome. All right. Don't forget there's a, vamp there's a potential vampire in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Crixus goes to dig through the snow piles to find his missing hand axe. Yep, you are able to find Hey, uh, Doug, would you like some healing? I would love some healing. So for some big numbers here. That's pretty good. 13. I'll you take can that. Have back. How do you feel? Uh, I feel crappy, but I still have... I have my own pool of health I can give myself as well. Okay. <clears throat> the room is very quiet now. There's like soft powdery snow where the golems were left behind. Um, six arrows were shot. I'm going to look for my arrows. Oof, not as good. I'm going to lay hands on myself. Of them. I'm going to touch myself. Yep. Seems like a paladin thing to do. There are stairs that blow that descend, and then a cave that also is same level uh, off to the east there from where you're at. This cavern kind of stretches northward into a curving little tail. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I could take a rest coming up pretty soon, so if we can find a place that's a defensible position, we should. Um, yeah. I mean, it's probably not a terrible idea. I think, uh... Mm. Definitely have Tika scout the perimeter of this room. Make sure there's nothing hiding in it. Scouting the room, Tika does not find anything within H18. Do you send her down either one of those hallways, the stairs, or the little hallway to the east? Uh, I'll wait till Doug's ready, because he's kind of the forward scout with okay. Tika. I would send... Yeah, I would send Tika down one of the paths. Um, so, is Tika something that can find, like, hidden things, like chests and crap like that? Or is it just like a visual? Like it's not yeah. searching for anything? No. She's she's real. She can she can do just about anything. She just we haven't established that she can talk, so her communication skills are more listening and you know getting excited about things. What's that, Tika? Crixus fell down the well? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Something like that. There's a giant there's a giant snake down there. I I think for my peace of mind, uh, Doug would go up to that very northern tip of that room and just make sure that there's nothing hiding up there that would. You find a lot of ice. Nothing hiding, just a lot of ice. Okay. All right, then I will. Yeah. I heard that too. I'll send, I'll go into the next room over and send Tika right. down south. All right. Or have I mean, Jacob send Tika south. Okay. So you're, you're going east, Tika's yep. going south? Yep. Okay. The, uh, the floors are slippery and uneven. Uh, in both these rooms, uh, the stairs down are slick. There's icicles hanging from the ceiling. But you don't find anything. There isn't anything beyond ice and snow. And what snow there is very powdery and able to be brushed away very quickly to reveal the icy floor below. Hmm. All right, then I would exit that room and go south then. Exiting that room, heading south, you have the same situation. The same situation as Tika's wandering around, sniffing the corners of this room. 
more snow. <coughs> Very crystalline ice floors. Slick and uneven. Hmm. Maybe it's the skeptic in me. But I'm, I'm going to tell everybody, well, this is an interesting situation because we have multiple rooms with just a few snowmen and no... It's like they were guarding something, but there's nothing here that they were guarding. Mm. <clears throat> so I'm going to head back into 18 and go back the way we came back to 17. As, as you start walking out, you see um, Tika sliding back and forth across the slippery floor. And since she's set to fire, it's like a Zamboni, and it's making it even slicker. Nice. Whee! <laughs> I was going to say, just like a walrus would. Just like the walrus. <laughs> Cuckoo, could you? Yeah, I was going to say, she said, she she remarkably becomes very, very uh, fluent in common. And says, Cuckoo, could you? Cuckoo, could you? <laughs> oh, I am the walrus. So all these rooms are dead ends. This might actually be a pretty defensible position. Yeah, I suppose if Just we wanted. Looking. Yeah, let's. Do we want to take a mm. short rest in the eighteen before we go back? Because we only have that one entrance that we'd have to guard. And we could pile a bunch of snow up in front of the one entrance, so they'd have to like bust through the wall of snow. Mm. I don't think Valina is hurt, and Jacob probably doesn't benefit much from a short rest. So we can we can guard while you guys are resting if you wanna. Perfect. Yeah. I need a long rest. I think. You do, Crixus. You really do need a long rest. Yeah, I think. Unfortunately, it's I'm not... basically like one crit damage away from dying just because yeah. of the <laughs> necrotic stuff. Now the question is, do you want to take a long rest, or are you gonna take a short rest? Because situations will be different depending on what you're doing well a short rest does not help so i talk to the team and i say well, the, the, we, the pain doesn't seem to be abating i i i need some rest and i do have the mace of warning so we can't be surprised while we're long resting yeah uh T, uh jacob's got a longbow of warning as well i think yeah we're, so we're, we're well protected you're well protected to um, be alerted did, and just did we? We didn't find the um, the cobalt vampire that ran this way. We didn't find a body. No. Mm -mm. We didn't find anything. His footprints disappeared at that wall. Oh. Almost like he turned into mist and disappeared. Oh man! That mean that means it may not be safe in here or anywhere search, for that can, matter. But can you search the wall? Any switches? Any... Yeah, Doug would go back Annals. to that area where the where the footprints stopped, and I would yeah. do an extensive, exhaustive search. You take the next twenty minutes searching this wall, and you find nothing. You look closely at those footprints, and they just seem to disappear. Like literally, it's like someone picked him up out of the ground <laughs> and carried him away elsewhere, but you don't see any other footprints. I'm gonna He's look straight up, with up a crane or something at the ceiling. It looks like a ceiling. There's icicles up there. Mm. All right. If you look at the icicles closely, there's no way anyone could have grabbed them. In fact, you hit one of them and it falls right away. Like if anyone were gonna try and use us to climb up out of there, you would have heard and seen I mean, the icicles all over the floor. It seems like as safe as it's gonna get in this place. Yep. Um, you I mean, saw... Jacob and Tika and Valine, I assume, are willing to keep going. Yep. Crixus obviously wants to stay. If we and take Valine a long is... rest, I get spell slots back, so that would be a bonus to me. I was going to say, Valine said if we, yeah, if, I mean, it's early. But if we rested for a long while, I could I regain some of my strength from my magic, which would be helpful. Um, and if, if, Crixus is not feeling well from the last fight. We we definitely should see about taking a long rest to try and get him in better shape. All right. No. Long Crixus rested. says, "Let me put it this way: I'm going to take a rest, <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be up to you guys if you want to stay with me or not." Valine shrugs and says. All right, and sits down over <laughs> near the entrance. Doesn't she now watch right, that bubble? That bubble? 
10 oh, to yeah. see. Does she have room to make the bubble? Can she make the She's bubble? going to do it, though. I think wait until it's actually like sleep sleep time if it's still early in the day. Like, I don't know how long until we can actually oh, yeah, sleep she can sleep. Do, she can do the bubble bubble. Because it's only, it's only eight hours so far. Yeah, so you can take a long rest. Yeah, you still sense. have like eight hours before it's going to be sleep sleep time. So. So you gotta take a long rest and not sleep. This is gonna sleep. Crick, this is gonna sleep. Well, here's the funny yeah. thing. After about an hour of resting, every one of you becomes incredibly hungry again. Ah. <sighs> Like, it wakes you up from... You nod off for a little bit, Crixus, and then you wake up from it, and your stomach is just turning, and you can think about nothing but eating. Hmm. <clears throat> so does that interrupt the long rest, then? It depends. What are you doing? So I'm going to eat a eating. ration. I'm going to yeah. eat all of it. I'm going to eat all You're gonna the You're going to eat an entire ration? ration? You're going to eat a whole ration? Okay. Yeah. So you eat a whole ration. Uh, do you eat a whole ration? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll split one. I'll you split, split one with Tika and okay. Doug. You can split one with Valine, maybe. If you wanted but, to. And Valine would take some. She's been nibbling out of her ration supply, but she'll take some. She's got uh, not many left, I don't think. I forget what I gave her. Uh, yeah. Actually, if anybody can... If anybody can take uh, make any food. If anybody can make the food, or... food just now. <laughs> if anybody can make what? If anybody can uh, change their spells to like make create food or anything or or good berry, might not be a bad choice on the long rest. If you can change your spells, uh, I, I don't can't. Think I have anything like that. Spells and she's she. Is learners her spellbook? I don't think she is. Do you, uh, do paladins change their spells daily? Also, or is that? I don't think so. I know clerics and druids do. I don't know. I don't remember paladins. I haven't played my paladin in like two years, so I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I thought that I could change spells at long rest, but I haven't. Uh, Let's check it. Paladin, you can change your list of prepared spells when you finish long rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Preparing there a new go. list requires time spent in prayer, one minute per spell level for each spell on your list. When you finish your long rest. Uh -huh. So you have seven yeah. more hours before you can do this. Right. Yep. To make a yep. long story short, this is, seems like the longest of long rests as each hour you're awakened with an insatiable hunger. So Eating I a only full have... ration does not <laughs> seem to change the fact um, but eating a partial ration does. Like, eating a partial ration acts the same way as eating a full ration. I will. You will get to the point over the seven hours, like we'll say the first... The first three hours go by, and it takes you like three hours to figure out what the minimum amount of food is that you can ingest to get this to go away. And it's about a quarter of a ration. Okay. A handful yeah, I, of food makes this go away. I only You're have, starting uh, to wonder if this seven. is... <clears throat> like, after the third or fourth time, you start suspecting there is something wrong with each of you. Uh, if you guys remember when this started... You can bring it up. Sure. If you can't, go ahead and roll an intelligence check, and I can, if you roll high enough, I mean, I'll explain I, to you when it started. I, I remember, and I have a pretty good intelligence. So I said, you know, this first started when Tika, Tika got hungry, strangely, when she was in, looking at those skeletons. Yeah. So, so I wonder if there was... We just left the skeletons, right? Yeah, it was earlier oh. today. Tika destroyed the skeletons, didn't she? Is that what happened? Yeah. Soon, as soon as, as soon as we sent her, yeah, yeah. As soon as we sent her in there, it came back hungry skeletons, and that's when I got hungry. 
I think this might be some sort of curse. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Can you remove curses, Paladin? She says looking at Doug. Or Crixus, maybe you? Do you have a way to remove a curse? Crixus can. So, How long till you remove curses to cast that? At, remove curses at third level spell. And uh, also I see create food and water as a third level spell. I have both of those. You have both of those today? Or you're going to be able to have them tomorrow? Um, I'll have create food and water tomorrow. But I have remove curse. Do you have enough in you to cast Start. it a couple of times yet today? Before I go to sleep, yes. Yeah. Okay. I have two third level spells and I have two fourth level spells. Well, All right. take, we'll essentially take two rations for one of us to get through the night. One, two. Um... A lot of calories. I can. So... Oh, wait. Uh, Tika's been resummoned since then. So oh, yeah, maybe so it, yeah it's not on her then. So she's fine. Okay. She doesn't need it. So strangely, she wasn't hungry. Uh, so okay. four of you. So if you have four... Plus if you have four removed curses, that'd be enough to get us He said he's got enough for two right now. Um, I've got like enough said, third level spells for two, and then I could use my fourth level spells, but I'd have to guarantee I get a rest. Otherwise, I have no... Well, if you can right. remove it from all of us, it seems we might be able to sleep here now. This has not been a restful yeah. rest so far, she says, four yeah. hours. And I'll... Yeah. You, Clear us of this Do that. damned curse, and I'll pull up my bubble, and we can sleep. So I'll cast Remove Curse on myself, and kind of see if my hunger abates. Uh, having just had a handful of food, or are you going to wait until the next time the hunger comes on to do that? Um, or no, I'll cast it, it on right myself away? right now, right see now. if I feel differently. You don't feel any different, but after an hour that you can see noticeable signs in the three of them, Valine and Crixus and Doug, that they, they're hungry again and they start nibbling okay. on rations, but you hey, don't have that. Hold number. on, friends. Hold on, friends. I am not hungry. It Valine, seems as though this may have been a curse. Valine stops right away the second you say, hold on. Mm -hmm. And so then I cast Remove Curse on Valine. And I ask yes. her if she's feeling well. Yes. Yes, I feel... Yeah. Holy cow. Okay. And she puts the ration back in her bag. Yeah. Uh, hurry up with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll cast the last remove curse using a fourth level slot you get on Jacob. You get remove curse. Yeah, and then Doug... So the curses are removed from all of you. She brings out her hut, and you guys take a long rest in which you sleep. It's early for sleeping, but it's it would be early. Mm -hmm. You've dealt with the hunger thing for like four hours, not getting very good rest the entire time. Um, so during the time that maybe we're we're alternating watches, maybe uh, I would like to teach Doug. Five words in Draconic to help him with Tika at the front line. Okay. Will she listen to him if you... I suppose you just say listen to Doug. <laughs> she yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the basic commands, obviously one is quiet, because I know Doug wants uh, that stealthiness. Um, help. Shut up, Tika. Would be, <laughs> help would be the equivalent of like, you know, I need help. But just like help me, um, attack, fetch, and here would be like a heal, like come here kind of thing. Okay. So those would be the five that that I would teach Doug, and see if he remembers them in the moment if he needs them. So okay. help, attack, here, here, H E R E, yeah, quiet. And fetch. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, Doug, make an intelligence check. Uh, 
Nope, you're not smart enough to command nine. Oh. Nine. We'll see how well you remember these. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's probably about accurate with my brain in general. Actually, this is going to be very fun. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be a check at disadvantage. And then if you get it wrong, you're going to roll a d6. <laughs> 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 I remember the words. I just don't know which one goes with what. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It'll be fun. We'll see what <laughs> it can lead to some fun situations. Nice. Uh, Ugh, attack. <laughs> the, the, Wait, no, notice... not attack, Doug! Not attack, Doug! <laughs> I, well, and you notice there are um, there are five words, so a D6 leaves a space for her to go, huh? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what? What, did, what did you say? Huh? <laughs> what? All right, okay. Go, okay. Go ahead. Um, take your long rest. Um, and then I'll use one of my spells as we've talked to resummon Tika fully before the okay. the long rest, so that she's full again. Any of you that uh, had permanent I'll hit points, keep it on fire. Reset that. Long rest. Yes. Do take care of that. So, Crixus, you get all your hit points back. Raise that roof. So, any paladins or clerics who want to change their spells, now's the yep. time. Yeah, I'll take a look at that at, over the course of the next week to see if yep. I want to switch something out because it's probably time to close up shop. Yeah. I did. Uh, I did teach myself headed. create food and water, just in the thought that it might help later. So, really good idea. Which direction would you guys like to head? Come back into H seventeen. That splits off towards thirteen and nineteen. Stairs down towards nineteen. Um, or you could go back to fourteen as well. I mean, I feel like we would probably go south since we came in the other way, right? Yep. Yeah. Unless you go south I mean, to 19. That's where For the thinking. most part, we've been following the left-hand wall, which I think is a good way of not getting lost. So that would put us down towards H19 mm -hmm. if we continued that. So you walk down south, H19. It's Tika and Doug leading the way. Yep. 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 Um... You notice as you start walking through into here that there are bones that litter the floor. It is slippery and slightly concave. On the so on the southern side of this room, you see a humanoid looking figure, a very pale skin dark, tattered clothing. Um, and s sitting... Sitting? Kneeling. They're kneeling? They're, what? They're bowing. There's two of these gnolls bowing to this humanoid-looking figure. And he looks up with these ice blue eyes and hisses as he bears his fangs at you. And we'll oh. start there next week. Alright. Don't get bit. You may, have, you may have found the actual <laughs> vampire now. Mm -hmm. Don't get bit. <laughs> um, would Crixus have recognized this? I think he saw something like it when he had the arcane eye. Briefly, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. This looks uh, the 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 clothing and um, yeah, he, he looks like a rag. He almost looks like a werewolf, honestly, like a humanoid werewolf that's shape shifted several times and his clothing is all torn up and all ripped like apart. tattered at the legs and oh. very very pale skin, but humanoid. Like he looks like a human and he's got fangs and mm. hisses at you. All right, all right. Kick his ass, Seabass. Yeah. That's what we're here for. 
Cool. All right. Well, on that note, we are Two Nerds One Quest. We are here every Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Support us by letting others know about the podcast. Patreon.com slash Two Nerds One Quest. Uh, we have a shop, which I will put the link in the chat here. Um, maybe. Oh, I didn't make that command. Crap. Oh, well. Um, Next time. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I did make that command. I just had it wrong. All right. Go there if you want mugs and shit. <laughs> <laughs> mugs and shit. Uh, we will be back next Sunday, uh, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Uh, like I said, support us. Uh, give us a follow. Uh, give us a rating. If you listen to the podcast, go to wherever you get your podcast from and give us a rating. Go to I, what is it? Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. Any, any place where you can put in yeah. a rating, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, any yeah. of those, just leave a rating, please. It, it's helpful. It'll help other people that enjoy similar podcasts. Correct. So for me, for the Lazy Dragon, Mr. Crixus, and for the DM, Mr. JC. We'll catch you on the flip side. Oh, wait. What? Go trim your topiary. Oh, that could mean so many different things. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>